Okay, welcome everyone. Um, we are about ready to start our, our bite-sized PD, our professional development that is held on Wednesdays for elementary. And tonight we have Heather Farnan from Wonders joining us as our presenter. And she is going to be talking about the shared read and taking those places through the shared read to um, writing. Next week, ne not next week, uh, February 22nd, we'll have part two of that. And I believe that's Craig um, Wilmore who will be here and he'll be doing part two of taking the anchor text to writing as well. So it'll be a part one and a part two. Just to remind you of our professional development norms uh, that are posted there. And um, we are recording. If you have questions after the recording, um, we'll be happy to take those. If you have questions during the recording, we're happy to take those as well. So we'll go ahead and get started. And um, Heather, go ahead and take it away. All right, well, welcome everybody. I'm just thrilled to be working with you today. Um, and those of you that are joining via recording later, um, just always make sure you reach out to us with questions as they come along. Um, one of my biggest reminders is that implementation is a journey and it's a process, it's not an event. So this is perfect as you're taking these bite-sized PD ideas so that you can take small chunks away. And it's the way we do with students too, right? Um, we have to scaffold for them and we want to make sure just everybody can take small things away that they can continue in the journey. Um, and I know our journey right now is really looking at the power of the reading writing companion and making sure we're embracing that. And really today we're going to take a look at the shared read and the reading and writing that goes along with that. Um, and just making sure that we're utilizing that to, to the full advantage. When we're looking at any instruction, um, but especially, you know, starting out the week and looking at our shared read opportunity, that shared read and analytical writing, that writing about text, we're still going to focus on our key outcomes. So when we're looking at the shared read, we have different opportunities for questions when we're doing those mini lessons, and we want to always remember those key outcomes, the red check mark skills are the areas that are assessed. And so those are gonna be the key focus points. So as we're looking today and we're looking at, you know, must do's and may do's for questions and all of those things, we wanna always have those key outcomes in mind because those are really our focus areas and it allows us just to streamline what we're doing a little bit more. Now opportunities in the Reading Writing Companion always start with that essential question and building knowledge and, there's a really key important part here when we're talking about students reading and writing and doing this with the shared read. The shared read is going to be our, our teach and model, um, but we always need to allow students plenty of opportunity through all of these experiences to collaborate, to have those really important collaborative conversations. The collaborative conversations allow students to be involved in the learning. So we don't feel like we're the ones talking the whole time. Um, whoever's doing the talking is doing the learning. So make sure that when you see the little, we call them kind of lovingly talking heads in that instruction, make sure that you allow students that little chance to turn and talk and to collaborate because as they're collaborating, they're able to get more into the learning, the conversation. And then when they can talk about it, they can write about it. So. They need those opportunities for the conversation going throughout. So they're doing that, that learning. Always, I'm going to reference our instructional routines handbook. If you need more information or just reminders about how that collaborative conversation routine unfolds, um, you can always find more information about any routine in the instructional routines handbook. Now, talking specifically about the shared reading opportunity, the shared read is our teach and model. And the shared read is our teach and model, not just with a, that short complex text and especially those upper grade levels, um, two through five, but that shared read is also the teach and model for reading and responding to text, that writing portion. So when we're responding to the shared read, which is the goal, we're, we're moving up to that in the couple of days that we spend in the shared read. That is a teaching and modeling opportunity for response to text as well. So we're doing more modeling with 
the, the shared read and also reading and writing. So just keep that in mind um, because we're kind of scaffolding this experience and we are doing a little more of the heavy lifting in this experience because this is the teaching model. So in the shared read, just a reminder, we have those stair steps or that close reading routine that really build our, our learning throughout every read that we do in our text set. But in the shared read, this is the teach and model of the close reading routine. I like to think of the close reading routine and remembering that these are incremental. We're always doing the red reads first. Um, we're only looking at those red categorized areas when we're looking at that first day in the shared read and our questions are depth of knowledge one to two, it's basic comprehension. Um, we're always allowing students once again to have those collaborative moments so that they're talking and learning during this time as well. When we get to that reread, um, that's more of those depth of knowledge two to three questions. That's when we are completing our mini lessons with the prompts. That's when we're analyzing, we're getting deeper into the text, we're doing um, that reading and writing with our mini lessons. And then we're going to integrate. So at day five or day 10, we're really integrating all of our ideas and transfers. That's that's highest step of knowledge. In the shared read, we're really living in the read and the reread. And that's what we're gonna be talking about today. But ultimately the goal is to provide that stared opportunity or that step or that scaffold into the reading. So it's really important that we make sure that we do these in this order so that we get that true scaffold and step into the reading. So our shared read, our true teach and model, um, in your teacher's edition, you're going to kind of set the purpose. And it says, focus on the red read prompts, because remember, this is that first stair step in. Um, for those reread prompts, and, and the students are gonna see both, right? I always talk about embracing the reading writing compa companion and the power and the margins of the companion. So students can see the red reads. They also see those green reread prompt opportunities. But right now we're really just focusing on the red and maybe that takes a student reminder too. Um, those rereads have a specific place where we'll look at lessons there. So that first time through the text, we're going to choose the, the questions that we ask. We're gonna choose those with purpose. It's not that we have to ask every single question. Note that in your teacher's edition, there's a, a line or a topic as to what that question is going with. This is an ask and answer questions um, question. This is a chronology question. I wanna remind you that the questions that we ask, remember those key outcomes. Um, look here, like there is a link, like this is the chronology question here in the teacher's edition, this is what it looks like in the student edition, so those are even labeled as well, but you know that chronology was one of our key outcomes, so I'm going to want to make sure that I'm going to focus on those questions. So when you're looking at the student reading writing companion in the read part, that day one, you see along the outsides of your teacher's edition margins, multiple opportunities for questions in that read stage, that first stage for depth of knowledge, one to do questions, and that depth of knowledge is listed there. So we can choose by depth of knowledge. We can also choose by, and what we really want to focus on are those key outcomes. We know that chronology, um, asking and answering questions, and then I chose this one because I want to get to a one higher depth of knowledge. I want them to be able to synthesize a little bit. I want them to have that opportunity to kind of turn and talk about that. So I'm going to choose with purpose the questions that I'm going to ask in every stage of that close reading routine. So in my red read questions, I'm gonna make choices here, but they're informed choices. And those informed choices are going to be based on my assessed outcomes. So always keep those student outcomes in mind as you're looking through the questions because we want to have that end in mind as our goal. Now in the, yes. I just wanted to remind um, those who are watching that those outcomes, if you go back one slide, um, those are also the same um, skills and standards that we put in the curriculum guides. So in our instructional guides in the skills and sequence portion, that is what was mapped in, not everything. We we prioritized as well. So there's an alignment there for those 
who are using, it's not one or the other, it's the same. Okay, thanks for that clarification, Susan, really important. So everything that your district done has done to work in putting things together for you is very carefully mapped. So what you see in the teacher's edition with those key outcomes, you're gonna see in your district materials as well. Thank you for that clarification. Um, know that in the kindergarten and first, you are doing the foundation of what they are going to be reading and writing about. So you are doing a lot of that modeled writing with the shared read. So you're gonna have that daily modeled writing and grammar piece. So it does look slightly different. You have kind of some added areas of that modeled writing and grammar daily in the kindergarten and first grade um, reading writing companion. And then opportunities in your teacher's edition for the sample teacher talk um, for how to model that for students. And I know Kelly talked um, about things that you can do in the reading writing companion and a lot of heavy modeling and what that looks like um, last week with you. So just a reminder, if you are in our upper um, grade levels, that we are scaffolding this, that we are providing those opportunities for them to do that writing of letters, words, sentences, and really building that into the daily instruction in kindergarten and first grade so that they have the preparedness for what's coming. Now, our mini lessons, these are, especially in grades two through five, going to happen on day two. So we've spent the first day of instruction with our teach and model and our shared read. It's that short, complex text. And we're doing smaller writing opportunities. So we're looking at the margins and we're maybe circling some evidence in the text and we are finding some of those words that we're looking for. So we're looking at our key outcomes, getting to some basic comprehension questions, but our, our writing in the margins is in smaller sections and pieces and we've carefully chosen um, which ones we're looking at. For our reread mini lessons, these are labeled in the student companion. This is where they have their I do, we do, you do, and we get to a little bit of larger increments of writing and responding to text. We're getting deeper into the text. We're finding text evidence. Um, so we have that I do. We're going to briefly kind of define this mini lesson. This is a reread strategy lesson. We have our text. We're going to go back to a specific piece. We're going to find that evidence where it's right here on their page. We're kind of looking at this together. Remember, this is a modeled experience. And I want you to notice that that you do opportunity in this gradual release lesson is still a collaborate opportunity. So yes, we're looking at the evidence, but we want them to collaborate, have that turn and talk moment so that they can talk before they write. So in that your turn part that you do or that y'all do or we all do, still this is a modeling moment. And we want them to have that talking opportunity before they're writing anything, because if they can't talk about it, um, you know, it's harder to write about it if they haven't done that talking. Notice too that these mini lessons are just that. They're just a 10 minute mini lesson. Now, yes, are they longer in the beginning? They are a little bit, but we really do wanna to stick to that kind of 10 minute time frame because this is not a 30 minute lesson on text features, headings and maps. We're taking this opportunity to get deeper into the text. We're taking this opportunity to analytically write, to look at that in a different way. But sometimes for me, um, teaching, it, it took, I, I tend to over talk and a lot of us do as teachers. Set a timer, understand what 10 minutes is. That bell's gonna ring before you know it. So kind of just to get an idea about the timing that this should kind of take, um, especially in these mini lessons, because in this teach and model, this is our first introduction to this text features to headings and maps. It's a key outcome, it's a teach and model, but it's one introduction that we will be revisiting throughout. So keep that in mind with our mini lessons. Um, there are going to be readers to writers connections within the mini lessons, within the reread mini lessons. Those are, that's more of the power in the margins of the reading writing companion. So those reader to writers call outs are little writing reminders. So they might say, as this one, remind students that authors use text features to highlight important ideas to make text easier to understand. So it's important to kind of call those little moments out too, um, because those are there for a reason within the text. Now our mini lesson for text features, it's one of our key outcomes. Once again, if you need a review of the mini lesson routine, it's in that instructional routine handbook. 
just a little more information about the mini lesson routine and then the respond to text routine. The mini lessons in the reread section are our key outcomes, but it's scaffolding also the writing segment. So we are explaining, doing a little model, looking within the text, and then they have a chance to analytically write in a graphic organizer that's in their companion. So we're teaching chronology, we're having them increment events within the text where they can go immediately back into that text. So they are analytically writing here. They are writing events in the order in which they occurred. Now, the way that you do this in um, August, the way that you do this in November, the way that you do this in February, if you've started and you're modeling these things, Yes, you get more of opportunities for students to be able to do, you know, and, and write more on their own. Sometimes are you writing multiple ideas um, and they're maybe copying their favorite, um, something that they can read, something that they can understand? Absolutely. Remember that this is a process in the instruction of the many lessons. We're trying to get concise in what we do, in that I do, we do, you do, but we do have to model this and this is a modeling moment, it's a teach and model. So this isn't a page where I'm going to be expecting my students to just go back, find the events and write them down. I'm really modeling this, this method here. Um, we're gonna go back together and look at page 13. We're going to look together and point out signal words. We're all gonna be doing it. Everybody has ownership in the text. So we're all using our finger to point out those words. And maybe I will, you know, I will, uh, because it's in my digital lesson presentation, I will be able to mirror or show um, my student reading writing companion, and I will model how I want these things done. So I could do that digitally. So if we're going through, um, I can model in the mini lessons. I can, you know, model by typing into the text, and I can do it this way, or I could, depending on how you teach, I could have on my whiteboard, I could just have, you know, these detailed charts, you know, written and I could model some examples or one of the examples or maybe two of the details and have students talk and come up with that third detail or perspective. So there are multiple ways that you can model this, but it is really a, a modeling experience. Now, what these mini lessons are doing are leading up to that experience where we are writing about the text. So all of these mini lessons and the skills and strategies that we're teaching, we started with, you know, in the margins, doing a couple of those smaller pieces. They went to writing in a graphic organizer, so they're getting larger chunks of writing about the text. Um, we're going to give them some, there's some optional, remember I told you in the margins of the student edition, they see these little mini lesson rereads. We don't have to go back and, and revisit all of these. Maybe you want to choose one to start. Maybe you want to choose two to start. But all of these experiences are allowing them pieces to talk, to get deeper in the text, because our, our goal is for them to be able to create that response. This respond to reading also, because I'm in my shared read, is a still a teach and model experience. So I am modeling with them how to respond to reading we are going to use our notes from that graphic organizer in that three-tiered event or that um, chronological order or using those number words to respond to the text. But the ultimate goal is for students to be able to create this response to reading. Um, they're doing this because they have those pieces in the Reading Writing Companion. They can flip back a page. They can flip back two pages. They can look at their graphic organizer look at that evidence to support what they're doing. So, you know, the lesson is here, respond to reading. This mini lesson kind of culminates day two if you're in grades two through five. You are looking at analyzing a prompt. You're going to look at that prompt together. You're going to be using your evidence that you found in your mini lessons, that you found in that shared read to come up with or create that response to reading. You're gonna be analyzing the evidence. It'll provide you more opportunities where you might need to go back into the text, kind of review some of those chronology pieces, review some of those notes that you took um, in that companion. 
there'll be grammar connections opportunities so if your students are needing some additional grammar connections or sentence starters those opportunities are there in the margins of the companion for the students um, what i like to do because this is kind of how we culminate day two is we've done these many lessons we scaffolded with that close reading routine into the response but you know I like to kind of look at this as a, a two day cycle, but when I'm planning, I will actually go to the, the re response to reading and I like to read that in advance. So I'll actually kind of back map my planning. I'll have my key outcomes in mind, absolutely. But I will look at this response and let me get to it where I can see one a little bit larger. Um, I will look at my response. Maybe I'll just take a, a, a thumb through the actual student edition. Hang on, let me get my cursor back. I'll go through the actual student edition, um, that student reading writing companion, and I will look at the respond to reading. What is our ultimate goal? This is our ultimate goal. We're gonna get there through our reading, our rereading in many lessons, our analytical writing to go along with the many lessons, making sure they're talking and writing within, because this is the goal. So I'll look. You know, what notes and evidence am I going to kind of want to call out? What questions am I going to want to make sure that I ask so that we can make um, a, a good um, response with our response to reading? So, kind of looking forward and knowing what this ultimate outcome is, is often really helpful, you know, prior to even beginning the first read. So, yeah. that's just, yeah, absolutely. Okay. Susan also make a suggestion. One of the things that Leanne and I have been working on is the teacher manual that has the annotations of this, Sarah, has a paragraph written for the respond to reading. If you have kids who need scaffolds to be able to write a paragraph, is what I've done when I is I just take what the sample is from Winters and take out some of those words. So um um, I just did this for another second grade class, and um, the, the question is, how does Bessie's story show that it means to be a hero? And I wrote Bessie's story shows blank because I was copying it straight from what Wonders already gives me. You know, Bessie loved blank, she wanted to blank, Bessie needs to blank, and so all of that came from, right from the uh, teacher's annotated edition. Do you know where to find that, Sarah, or have you found it? Uh, can you see my, I went to the website. Can you, yeah. can you see that? Yeah, okay. You can see it. So in the resource library, if you just type annotated in the keyword search, I went to resources, I went to resource library. If you go down to the bottom, if you just type in annotated and search, it brings up all of your answer keys. So you'll see like the reading writing companion annotated. And I also, when I find things like this, I like to star them or favorite them just as a reminder so that they'll always be in your favorites file. So you could just go to your, you know, they're categorized here. So you have your um, annotated versions of all of your companions right here. And then you can just Will keep you them open in your that favorite. So she can see how that's annotated. Absolutely. Uh, I think those response to readings and using those to make a paragraph frame is really nice for kids. What I've been hearing from teachers is kids can't write the paragraph. Well, then let's give them some sentence frames written in a paragraph to be able to do that. So if you kind of scroll down, you'll find a response to reading there. I'd go a couple more pages, yeah. Well, let me see. For some reason, I went to the it's the PDF and not the real one. So hang on, let me go to one. There's one right there. So here's the sample answer. So you could actually take that sample answer and make it into a paragraph frame for your students. Does that make sense, Sarah? Mm -hmm. I love that idea, Susan. Perfect. Yeah. So I'm you know, the author of Earth and Neighbors described blank. Scientists work to find blank. That's how I would do that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and you can sense. even, you know, scaffold that further. So some students need more of a scaffold than others. Mm -hmm. um, and so hopefully you can eventually, you know, take more pieces out 
over time. But I mean, you know, this is a, a great way to, to help them with creating this. Um, it's a great way to model and a great suggestion. Just make sure you know where to find those annotated versions. Yeah, that backwards um, mapping works really well. I love that Heather talked about that. I think what teachers want is, well, what is what should it look like? And I think mm -hmm. this is one. Leanne and I also did some rubrics on their sample answers and they don't all get fours in my opinion or threes or whatever. So I mean, I think that's important to know. I, it doesn't mean that, um, it doesn't mean it's not good or a good place to launch from is what I'm trying to say. Absolutely. Thanks Heather for letting me butt in there. <laughs> I'm so glad you did. Please butt in anytime. Sarah, have you had any questions as we've gone? Those are kind of the major points I would um, go over and really maybe I should have started there, you know, in that annotated version, um, some, some teachers just kind of have those really handy or um, download them to their desktop even um, because that's a PDF. So you can download, have that onto your desktop for easy access. Um, so some a teachers. common question we get, Heather, is can we buy those annotated versions? And I would ask that. So I'm saying this on record. They do wonders or McGraw-Hill does not print those anymore. So um, if that's something you want printed or certain pages, you would have to print that for yourself. So yeah, I'm I'm assuming because they've given you the PDF and you want to do some printing, it's probably okay because you're using it for that. Is, is, am I fair to say that, Heather? You're absolutely right. We give you full access. It's just not something that we print anymore. Um, I mean, you've got it right here. You can download it, have it, just print you know, if, if you know there are certain things you're going to use, I would probably print binder the response to readings, at least for a while. And that way you just have them right there. Maybe you keep them in your teacher's edition for next year, right at that at that place. Um, I know a couple of schools who have downloaded those and then bound them for their teachers. So, um, yeah, if you need support with that, you can ask, ask me for that further. Awesome. And a great tip that everybody will want to know. Anything else that you have questions about or that we need to? I don't think so. Is that the conclusion of your? That is kind of oh. the conclusion, just kind of making sure that okay. um, that they know that yeah. the reading writing companion, that shared read is a teach and model from the read to the scaffolding up to the response to reading. It's your chance to maybe make more of a model for them. Um, so that they can continue to get better, can continue to succeed, and it leads to more practice and application opportunities within the um, anchor text, which is what Craig's gonna go into next week. Um, okay. So just the challenge is to think about a way that you can make that reading writing companion more powerful. Maybe it's a little tip that we went over today. Um, just embrace what your students can do. You can see growth in those companions over time, they can see it. I've really loved going into classrooms and hearing students say, look what I used to do and now look what I can do. So that's what it's all about. I think we've um, also had a lot of questions from our district around um, what's the most important things in the reading writing companion. And um, Heather, I'd love your take on it, but to me it's that response to reading with the shared and the anchor text. And also I would add to that the graphic organizers that are in there that help the kids answer the questions and organize their thinking. Um, beyond that, everything can seem important and I'm not saying it's not, but really when they're thinking and we're organizing their ideas and then taking that to a writing piece is getting, is getting them ready for the big analytical writing that's behind the, the green tab as a district, we haven't really attacked yet. Um, and we'll be doing that next year as part of phase two of our implementation rollout. So yeah. So anyway, yeah. as we close up, he uh, Heather, uh, Sarah, we have these links here and you can uh, see the bite size PD. And if you want relicense your credit, there's a place there that you can go to. So I don't know if you want to take a picture of that screen or something so you can type in that 
bit.ly later if you want credit um, for the licensure. So I'm going to stop the recording now.